ultimately what I've got here in black is y equals x cubed. So even though I didn't take this antiderivative or solve those differential equations, I can still see a picture of the solution, and we could use the graph to do things like estimate the value, right? At 1, we know the value is 1. Um, you know, we could, say, fly over to this part of the graph. Somewhere around here, we could use that point to estimate its value at negative 3. So for very complicated um, differential equations, this can help get us towards a solution. Sorry, was there any uh, questions on that one either? Okay, so the next one I'm going to give you a minute to try and get uh, done by yourself here. And uh, when you do this sign, think about what points would you want to pick to do easy sign slopes. Which, uh, you know, which values, you're going to want to pick multiples of pi, but which values would you pick to make it easier? Okay, so um, if I was to take points on this, um, I would be looking at values like x equals uh, 0, x equals pi over 2, um, pi, uh, negative pi over 2, um, negative pi. Those would be values that would all give me pretty simple values for sine. So at sine, or at 0, the value of sine is going to be uh, 0, right? It's the height on the unit circle. So this is going to be 0 for my slope. At pi over 2, I'm going vertical. So the uh, height on the unit circle is 1. Oops, technical difficulties there. Um, at pi, it's also going to be 0. It's going to be negative 1 here, 0 there. So I'm going to use this as my you know, initial approximation. Again, the more points you use, the more accurate your graph will turn out. But um, if I put some points on here, there's a slope field at 0. Um, at pi over 2. Now, this is one tricky thing is the scale on this graph. Pi over f uh, each one is pi over 4. So that means it's not quite, it's not a 1 by 1 graph. It's a close to 1 and a half, right? So it only goes up by a half. So this would not be a, a good estimate of 1 because my scale is wrong. So what I'm saying is uh, what you want to do is it's going to be a little steeper than that. It's going to be about 2. So say it was something like this. Because um, normally it would be over one piece and up one piece, but the graph scale is not accurate for that. Okay, and then um, over here it would be a 0 again. And on this side, it's going to be negative 1. So it's going to go down. And at uh, pi, it's going to be 0. OK, so um, draw the initial condition at this point. So I'm at the point pi over 2, 0 0.5. So pi over 2 and 0 0.5 is here. And I have to follow this uh, slope, which is pointing up fairly steeply, and I need to get from going up in this direction to flat once I'm over here. So it's going to look something like this as it smooths out. Okay. And same thing when I come from this side. It's going fairly steep, and it eventually needs to flatten out here. So I'm going to have to fill my curve something like that. And then on the other side, if I follow it, um, through this through this part, it's going to go something like this as it passes through here, and then it needs to flatten out as it gets to the last part of our graph here. So it'll look something like this as it flattens out. And yes, I cheated. I know what the answer is, so my graph looks really uh, close to what the answer that truly is. But again, the more points, if you're ever not sure, more points, more accuracy uh, to help you draw your graph. So um, solve for the particular equation above, a particular solution. If I've got this integral, again, the purpose of picking these ones was that we could quickly, um, sorry, there's an x missing in there, um, was that we could quickly take the, uh, quickly solve that differential equation. So that would be y equals negative cos x plus a constant. So if you didn't recognize the graph you were looking at, shame, shame. 
but uh, it's a very familiar one that you should recognize from Math 12. Uh, this is the piece of it that's missing for Math 12 students. It's the one that goes down on this side, right? This is where you get on the Ferris wheel at the bottom and you ride up to the top. So uh, it'd be a negative cosex. We just don't know where the center line is. It's like it's rewinding. Okay, so to solve for that particular solution, we use that point, and uh, 0 0.5 equals the uh, negative cos of pi over 2 plus c, and cosine of pi over 2 is worth 0. Good. So I get 0 0.5 equals c. The particular solution that we actually have already drawn um, is y equals negative cos x plus 0 0.5. And that's the graph you should recognize there. Um, spent lots of time on this in math 12. If this is my center line at 0 0.5, I have an amplitude of 1, an amplitude of 1. Um, it is the cos graph. So it starts, negative cos starts down here at the minimum, goes up. More fun to come in June when we start looking at the provincial exam again, right? <laughs> Okay, so any questions about um, sort of how we're connecting this slope field into the original? Yes? Again, how many tick marks you have in AP exam? There will specifically be dots for where you put your tick marks. Um, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stress over that. It'll be clear to you. If, if it's worth marks, it, it'll be very clear. Um, and if you're wondering, you know, like how accurate does my graph have to be to get full marks? I wouldn't be super concerned about how your graph turned out as long as where you drew the slope field, you've matched up that the point where it's tangent there matches the slope. So, you know, if you're very, very off, you at least need to be able to draw um, the correct points where you've shown on your slope field. Like, for example, uh, you might lose some marks here if you kind of went like, uh, like this. Uh, maybe that's a little extreme here. But let's just say that for some reason you went like that then I might just do this when I marked it. I might say, you know, like, what the heck is that? Your slope's totally off of what you told me it's supposed to be, right? But as long as your curve kind of goes through the tangents that you've drawn, that's enough. Okay, so I wouldn't stress over that. Uh, again, it'll be very clear in a situation where marks are, are or it's for marks. Okay, so the last thing we're going to take a look at is a graph um, in implicit form. And... Um, this one would be a difficult one to separate your variables. Um, you know, it doesn't work out quite so easily as what we've done so, uh, so far, at least for differential equations. Um, you're going to notice here, if, if I do this, um, it doesn't work out quite to start because I'd end up with something like this. And then um, dy equals, let's see here, x plus, sorry, forgot one thing. So it'll be an x dx plus y dx. And this causes me some grief now because that y is attached to a dx. So um, it's going to be a problem when I try to rearrange this. Uh, it's not so easy to separate. This is an example where a slope field comes in handy because directly it's, it's very difficult to do. So if we do it implicitly, we have to use uh, both values in the point. So before, we were just using x because it was explicitly. So what I mean is, um, for example, at the point 0, 0, that means when I put it in here, the slope is going to be phenomenal. Fantastic. Yes, 0. 0 plus 0. Because um, at that point, when you add them together, you still get a 0. Okay, let's see who's thinking still, who's awake. If I'm over here at 1, 0, um, let's put this point on our graph. What am I going to be worth uh, for the slope here? Yeah, 0 plus 1. So this one, the scale is correct, so it's safe to go like that. Okay. So see if you can fill in. I'm going to fill in the slope field up here. You try and fill it in on your graph, um, and we'll see how they compare. <coughs> 